Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the inequivalence between using an analysis of covariance and uh, what might be called a, a residualized index approach to uh, estimating the difference between means uh, that control for another variable. So in, in the analysis of covariance, um, we test the difference between means uh, that includes a covariate in the model that allows us to estimate adjusted means. Uh, in the um, that's the most sophisticated approach to doing uh, an analysis of means while taking into consideration another variable. Although the multiple regression approach that I demonstrated in another series of videos can give you identical results, but there is another approach that people use sometimes to evaluate the effect of an independent variable on a, on a on a dependent variable while controlling for another variable and that's to use a, a residual index if you will so what they do is they residualize the uh, dependent variable of interest onto the covariate and the residuals are then uh, used as a dependent variable and they submit that to either an analysis of variance or a t-test and then they um, evaluate the mean difference that way. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, that that's an inappropriate way to analyze data uh, and if you're interested in learning more about what I'm talking uh, about uh, you can go into Google Scholar and write the words analysis of residuals and ANCOVA and you'll get some papers. Uh, the first paper is pretty good, it's, it's relatively basic uh, on the e misuse of residuals in ecology and you can download that for, with a PDF in PDF format, Misunderstanding Analysis of Covariance uh, talks about this issue. And then another paper that's probably the most in-depth is ANOVA of Residuals and ANCOVA, Correcting an Illusion by Using Model Comparison Graphs. Um, so basically what these papers are arguing is that you shouldn't use it, despite the fact that there are a lot of people that do seem to use it and get published doing so. What I'm going to do is precisely the analysis of residuals approach uh, as an alternative to ANCOVA, and I'm going to show you that you get different results, and I'll, I'll point, give some pointers as to why that's the case. If you don't know the analysis of covariance, you should check out the video series I've already uploaded to YouTube, because I'm going to blitz through it in this case, because I want to get more to the analysis of residuals. So I'll do my uh, analysis of covariance. Uh, no, what I'll do is I'll get into the analysis of residuals right away. And how to do that is you regress. This In this case, it's the dependent variable is cranial capacity. And the hypothesis is that males and females may have unequal cranial capacities and then the additional uh, component to this is that we have to control for body size and in the uh, ANCOVA video series I created uh, a principal component uh, from which I derive principal component scores as an indicator of body size. So I'm going to regress the dependent variable cranial capacity onto body size factor and I'm going to save the residuals that are going to be cranial capacity residuals that are independent of the body size factor variable. All right, so to do that, you're going to analyze regression linear. And I'm using body size as an independent variable to predict cranial capacity. And what are vari whatever variance is left over is considered the residuals. And that's considered a pure measure of cranial capacity that is not uh, affected by body size, independent of body size. So I'm going to save to save the unstandardized uh, regression coefficients. All right, and I'm going to click OK. Now, I want to point something out here in the output, even though I, I really did this analysis just to get the residualized variable. But we can see that the correlation in a standardized beta format coefficient, it's the same thing as a correlation in, in a univariate linear regression model, is 0.57. So the correlation between body, the body size comp composite and cranial capacity is 0.57. So a good, good size correlation. The unstandardized beta weight is 97. So for each unit increase in the body size composite variable, there's an extra 97 cubic centimeters of cranial capacity. All right, and the mean is 1351 of cranial capacity. All right, so we'll, I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, what I'll point out is that SPS 
s has created a residual variable. The default is res1. I'm going to change that to cranial residual. And I'm going to get rid of this label. All right, so now I've got cranial residual, which is a new cranial capacity variable that's independent of the effects of body size. And now what people naturally and very logically think they can do is do a t-test or an ANOVA on their residualized variable rather than doing an ANCOVA. Now I'm going to do this uh, ANOVA. I'm going to go into compare means, one-way ANOVA, a cranial residual. I'm going to use sex as my uh, independent variable. And uh, I'll just have my descriptives in there, the homogeneity of variance maybe, and I'll click OK. What I get is a non-significant effect. So F equal 2.12, a uh, significance of 0.15. Now those of you who, and actually the Levine's test of homogeneity variance is actually just barely rejected, but we'll just disregard that for, this, for the purposes of this uh, tutorial.